Greetings, AP Calc BC student, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and I wanted to go ahead and start our discussion here over topic 10.9 from the CPU curriculum. Now, it's really important that we understand that I piggyback my 10.9 information immediately after we talk about topic 10.7, which was the alternating series test. Remember that topic 10.7 will still leave us a little hanging. When we have an alternating series, which is a series where the terms alternate signs, positive to negative, positive to negative, etc., we still don't see the big picture in terms of convergence and divergence. And that's why we have to piggyback 10.9 onto that information because we have to talk about the two different kinds of convergence, absolute and conditional, because the AP exam is going to request that information more often than not. So let's see what I mean by absolute versus conditional convergence. So what we've learned here is that the concepts of absolute and conditional, what we're going to learn, I should say, they're going to be used to determine the convergence of a series in which the terms alternate. Okay, sometimes the terms positive, sometimes the terms are negative. They don't necessarily have to alternate. I should say anytime that you have a series that has some positives and negatives in any kind of arrangement, we can still use this idea of absolute and conditional convergence, but the most common series that we apply it to is the alternating series. So we start with this theorem, and it's a pretty easy theorem, I think, to understand. And it says, if you've got a series, the summation, and it really is independent upon where the index begins and ends, of the absolute value of an nth term expression, and you know that guy is going to converge. What that basically says is it doesn't matter if it has an alternating component in front of it or an alternator, like a negative one to the end, because that series is going to converge also. Really, all it means is that that alternating component just takes those points and just makes them sort of scatter themselves around the x-axis, sort of like this. But yet, we already know that if those points weren't scattered around the x-axis from above and below, then it would have probably looked like this, because we've essentially taken the absolute value. Okay, So it's basically telling us that, hey, if this one here on the right is going to converge, then the one on the left is going to converge as well. Now, take note. The converse of that theorem is not true. In other words, if you say a series converges, then putting the absolute values around that expression will make the series converge as well. And the perfect counterexample to that is our alternating harmonic series. Now, if we were to focus only on the a sub n, Okay, well, that would be this entire expression, right? Okay, that would be our a sub n. In this case, we're letting a sub n include the alternating component. It's a little confusing. So we take that summation, and we know that this converges. We already talked about this, right? The alternating series uh, with the harmonic will converge by the alternating series test. However, if we were to take the absolute value of this same nth term expression, which you can pretty much bank on the fact that that's going to return the normal harmonic series, that diverges, which is not what this is saying if we were to reverse the if-then to get our converse statement. So we have to think about this only as a one-way street. OK, well, let's go ahead and see how we can apply this to our notion of an alternating series. So what is the definition of absolute and conditional convergence? Well, maybe in the simplest language, this orange box puts a little bit of uh, uh, light on the subject. It says you've got a summation of a sub n that you know is absolutely convergent, as long as the summation of the absolute value of that same expression converges. That's going to be probably the easiest situation that we're faced with. 
However, that summation could be conditionally convergent if the summation of the a sub n converges, but the absolute value of that expression's summation diverges. I know it's really kind of tricky to wrap your head around. I want to go ahead and work through an example here, and then I'm going to maybe allude to a really wonderful flow chart that I think is going to help you a lot throughout this process that I'm going to start using in our subsequent videos. But I want to struggle through this without that flow chart to begin. So in example one, we're asked to determine whether each of the series is either absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or we could still face the possibility of being divergent. So the very first thing that I want you to do, I want you to focus on looking at the summation of the absolute value of this expression. Okay, so what is it that we're really doing here? Well, I'm investigating what is the possibility of this series either converging or diverging, because that's going to put me either on line one or line two. So I, I personally always like to start with analyzing the summation of the absolute value. Okay, well, what that will then entail is the alternating component, right? This alternator is going to disappear on us, and then we're just left with this. And I don't think we need the absolute values anymore, because as you can see, if n is 0, these are just going to spit out positive results on both the numerator and the denominator side. So now we have to focus on this. What do you guys know about this series? What does this series do? Well, we could try a lot of different things with this, but uh, one of the things that maybe comes to my mind is, I don't know, let's try the nth term test. So if we use the nth term test, which is technically the nth term test for divergence, because it only tells us if we're going to diverge, then I would say that the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over 2 to the n is, and then this is where you just have to have a little bit of number sense. Any time that you have a factorial battling out with an exponential like this, where the base is known, a constant, that factorial is going to win that battle. It might take a few ends for that to happen, but we've talked about that in a previous video. This, excuse me, <laughs> things are moving all over the place here. So this guy here is going to equal or approach infinity. Well, infinity is not equal to zero, which is a good thing for the nth term test. So therefore, that means that the summation of the absolute value of this nth term expression diverges. And notice how I'm just writing this very shorthanded without the boundaries just to know which one of these uh, routes I'm going to take. Now, where do we go from here? Well, basically, what this means, if you ever get to this situation, you can remind yourself that you have just lost any chance of absolute convergence. That's all that it really means. Now, there is still a possibility that we could have conditional convergence. There's still a possibility we could have divergence. So now what we have to do is examine what does the summation of the given series do, the a sub n expression with the alternator. Okay, so now we look at him. And I know this might seem like we're doing a lot of extraneous writing, and I'm not saying that you would have to write all of these things out as you work through the problems um, in, the, in the exercises. I'm just trying to be a little bit extra thorough here in the video. So now we're looking at this. Well, how do you determine if an alternating series converges or diverges? I've got a feeling that the alternating series test from topic 6.7 is a good thing to use. So now it's going to kick in 
And so we're going to use him. I'm going to abbreviate him as AST. And hopefully you might remember from the alternating series test, it has two criteria. The first of which is take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth term expression. Hmm, it seems like we've done this before, but yeah, that's what the alternating series test has you do. It says to temporarily ignore the alternating component and look at this. I know that's the same thing as the absolute value. I know you just took that limit up here. It's just that we're doing it for a little bit of a different reason. And in this case, we end up getting something that's definitely not zero, right? It's infinity. And that means we've lost all chances to conditionally converge because you have to have this limit equal to zero. And we need to show that this is a monotonic non increasing function in criteria two, but we never have to discuss criteria two because we've already determined that we failed. And so with that, we can basically proclaim that the original series, I'm not going to rewrite it because it would be the second time I've done that, but the original series diverges. Okay, again, hang on to this i'm going to i'm going to tell you when i was first learning this this was very tricky and when i was first teaching this after so many years of being away from it uh, i i struggled with it and i was able to really see the bigger picture when i produced this idea of this flow chart i'm going to share with you here in a moment all right so let's take a look at part b are we conditionally absolutely or divergent well again we're going to start the problem the same way let's focus on the summation in this case n starts with one it kind of has to it can't start with zero of the absolute value okay well what what is that really going to do here well that's just going to wipe away the alternating component and now we're focusing on well what does this series do and my hope is that you guys would immediately see that this is a divergent p series, right? The p value is equal to a half into the one half power, less than one. So we're going to diverge. So what does that mean? Once again, we've lost any chance at absolute convergence. Boy, I've made these problems tough, didn't I? Because do you realize that if the absolute value of this series would have converged, then the problem's over. You would just write absolute convergence because that's what line one says. It's line two that's going to be the tricky line. <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do? Well, let me think here. Well, what do we have on our hands here? We're going to look at the original problem. And again, I know this is kind of going a little bit overboard on, on the writing, but I want this to, to certainly make sense to you. So we're going to look at the original problem, the negative 1 to the n over square root of n, and we're going to ask ourselves, well, how are we figuring out how does that behave, say, without the absolute values? What kind of test would we use on an alternating series? And again, the alternating series test. So we're going to use it again which means that we're going to break out our first criteria. Number one is the limit as n approaches infinity of the non-alternating piece, which is only the one over the square root of n, is that equal to zero? And I hope that you all come to the conclusion that it certainly is. So, so far, we're in the game for conditional convergence. So we go to the second part, and whoops, I don't want to write limit. The second part, if you recall from your topic 6-7, is you have to show that 1 over the square root of n plus 1, which is the nth plus 1 version of that non-alternating component, is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of n. Now, maybe I don't know if that's true yet, so I'm just making a conjecture. Well, if I cross multiply, I think at this point you might start getting a little bit more uh, confident that this is true. If not, you could square both sides. 
it starts to look even more possible. <laughs> and then by the time you subtract in, you know, we tease in class, well, now a kindergartner could probably tell that this is true. So check and check. So we know that this thing does converge just using the AST, but remember, we were divergent when we looked at its absolute value. So that basically means that this piece here is true, and that forces our series to be conditionally convergent. And when I say the series, I'm talking about the original problem that was presented to us. It's kind of a long phrase, isn't it? You could always abbreviate if you're careful. So the series conditionally converges, we'll say. Now, I kept promising you about this awesome, um, this awesome flowchart. And I'm going to go ahead and preview this. All right. But this is going to be coming in the next video. So I don't do this very often, give you the preview of what's to come so, uh, so precisely. But I've got a pair of flowcharts that really are going to make this process a little bit easier. Uh, it's no different than what I've just showed you. I will let you decide which flowchart you want to use. Um, there's one that I kind of have a preference. If you want to find out which one it is, you're going to have to come back. Hopefully this begins the process of you better understanding conditional absolute convergence. We'll see you next time.